Hello, everybody. Today is Wednesday, February 7th. It's 4.16 p.m. The futures markets regular session just closed about a minute ago. On my left is the time in sales, and you can see the last trade at 14.14.59 at 26.68. And just want to say uh, I didn't make a video for Monday and Tuesday because the market was so fast and furious that uh, I had some data issues and my charts were all over the place. Uh, I had some auto trader performance that made like twenty-five and thirty-five thousand uh, dollars trading the E-mini and the trades were pretty accurate but I didn't want to show that. I didn't want it to mislead anyone or, or skew the results because these kind of days uh, come along you know very infrequently and I just didn't want to show an auto trader making thirty five thousand um, dollars on Tuesday um, I had similar issues because Tuesday was uh, pretty furious as far as trading goes and um, again I had similar results and I was probably running too many charts so we did have a lot of good performers but uh, I just had some some issues, so I just didn't even bother to make a video. So today, uh, I actually traded less charts, and um, I put some the goals back to normal. On the previous two days, I increased my goals because of the volatility. So I was trading with daily goals of, you know, four and five thousand on a lot of charts. Uh, some of today's charts have uh, goals that were higher than the original goals, so we'll get to that in a second. In this picture here, in this chart, this is the daily chart. So uh, you can see the last few days of trading that um, you know we had this 10% uh, correction. It, it, at this market level, it's not too severe, but it's definitely uh, a change in trend and interesting on the daily chart how the BWT precision indicator uh, gave us a sell signal. Uh, within a couple of days before the market dropped hard. So uh, that's pretty interesting to look at. But this is uh, quite an event. We haven't had uh, a day this big um, on the 5th, two days ago, Monday. Uh, we haven't had that kind of a range uh, percentage wise in uh, quite a few years. Uh, I'm only going back here till um, as much as Ninja Trader would give me is only about five years here. But on my trade station charts and um, trading view, you, you, if you go back uh, 20 or 30 years, you, you won't see a drop in the S&Ps of this magnitude. Um, but percentage-wise, it's, you know, it's within you know, a normal correction. It's not a bear market yet, but it's certainly a normal and healthy correction. This looks like the chart of Bitcoin as it was rising. And as we all know, uh, Bitcoin hit um, you know, almost 20,000 and then lost uh, nearly 70% of its value, similar to the uh, bubble of 2000. So at my age, I've actually lived through these events um, and watched them traded on the charts and have my trading systems have traded through these kind of events and done really well. So, um, you know, I haven't been around that long and, and seen these kinds of things. I I knew Bitcoin was going to correct at some point, and, and I really called it well uh, long before it dropped. And, and one of my indicators is when your um, Uber driver and your, your plumber and your, um, you know, the, the people that, you know, wait on you at a restaurant are, you know, telling you that, you know, Bitcoin's going to the moon and, uh, you know, nothing's stopping this train. It's going to 100,000. Those kinds of remarks are my cue that it's probably getting near the uh, top of the bubble, and certainly that was the case. What's going to happen from here, looking at the daily chart, it looks pretty ominous. Um, I suspect we're probably going to get uh, some kind of, you know, maybe test a little higher here, but it certainly looks like a change of uh, direction, a trend change, in the beginnings of a trend change. Uh, in another video, I'm going to show uh, my auto traders on TradeStation and how they've been doing because they're doing quite well and they're quite interesting programs, not as uh, 
function the, they don't have the same functionality as ninja trader but the logic is the same and they're running really well in the trade station version the trade station charts definitely give me uh more data for daily bars and things like that so uh look for my trade station video okay as far as performance today uh first up is the the crude oil on 150 hike and tick chart and this did 2060 for the day so this is one of those charts that i raised the goal to 2100 on this one and again because of the increased volatility so this hit its goal is pretty strong for the crude remember this is only trading two contracts so if i bring the chart tighter here we only had a drawdown of 250 dollars that's minor and uh, it was pretty much up from there so really solid in uh, performance in this crude oil chart mostly winning trades. Okay, really interesting is the uh, E-mini S&P on a Superanko 2 tick with a 4 tick higher time frame. And on this one, uh, it starts trading pre-market and it looks like we drew down maximum couple hundred dollars it wasn't that much uh, kind of hard to see here but um, I increased the goals on this one this had a goal of 750 and I increased it by a thousand dollars so it hit its goal of uh, 1750 on a number of trades and this is real testimony to the fact that the higher time frame filter can work really really well and I believe these settings could be improved, but uh, that it traded like this uh, today and uh, turned in such a solid performance is pretty impressive, I believe. Okay, next up is the crude oil on the Superenco 7 tick, and this is a, a template that I pulled from uh, a chart uh, a couple of years ago that when we were showing in our videos a couple of years ago, and this is also mostly win winning trades. You can see uh, the start of trading here and doing pretty well uh, catching most of these short trades. So uh, probably hit its goal, probably 1500 on the goal here. And indeed, it did hit its goal. Okay, next up is the E-mini S&P on a Superenco 6 tick. And this one starts trading at 12.30 noon, and I also doubled the goal on this. This uh, normally has a goal of 7.50, and I increased it to 17.50. And so here it uh, just came shy of that goal and did uh, 14 and a quarter on the number of trades. Just another observation about uh, when you get uh, markets that are extreme uh, like a 200 point drop in the e-mini S&P what happens is uh, traders often pull their bids and and you find that uh, there's not a lot of liquidity sometimes and prices can jump many levels so it's extremely dangerous to trade in this kind of environment you got to be really careful really confident and know what you're doing or you can blow your account out in a day if you're not uh, you take too much risk you have to be really careful because of the volatility okay the crude oil again on a 987 tick chart and kind of similar to the uh, crude on the Superenco 7 uh, catching these short trades although in a different way on a different chart uh, but still hit its goal probably of 1200 or so I, I imagine and indeed it was 1200 and we had three ticks of positive slippage Okay, next up is the crude oil on a Superenco 6 tick chart, and this did really well. We had a drawdown only of about $400. That's not a lot for the crude, and then uh, straight up from there, as you can see, again, mostly winning trades. There wasn't quite the volatility in the crude as there was in the E-mini S&P, but still, there, it was quite volatile. 
Okay, next up is the NASDAQ on a 987 tick high Kanashi chart. And this did pretty good today. Uh, pretty minor drawdown here, mostly winning trades. We were underwater, not a whole lot, not really more than $300 or so, and then came back with quite a few winners, uh, mostly in the second part of the day, but hitting our goal probably of 1200 on this one. Now I had really high goals on this one, but uh, it so so yeah on this one I increased the goals, and so it had modest gain for the day. Actually, more in line with normal trading. Okay, this is the E mini S and P on a Superenco two tick, and with a four tick higher time frame. But this has a lower sensitivity than the other chart, and on this one, I have the goal at 1,020, and we did 9.62.50, so we probably hit our goal and had some slippage. Okay, next up is a six Renko chart. I've been experimenting with some Renko bars, regular traditional Renko bars that come with every charting package. I believe this has a lot of potential. It's just a question of filtering the trades uh, and adjusting the sensitivity on the trend indicator because with a little bit higher sensitivity, I could turn these bars red and there wouldn't be as many trades. But uh, this was interesting. There was a lot of winning trades, but it would turn around and have some losers. So we had an equity high of about $900 or so. It didn't start trading until the second part of the day when I turned it on uh, in the afternoon, but it still did 750 for the day on only two contracts. So. Uh, like I said, this has a lot of potential, and I'm basically trailing by one bar after we hit eight ticks of profit. So it's, t it's trailing the stop pretty tight, and the first profit goal is eight ticks, so pretty low risk. But as stated, uh, I think these kind of charts could definitely have a lot of potential uh, to make either large profit goals or small profit goals. Uh, perhaps using a higher time frame filter or uh, using a little bit higher sensitivity, smoothing out some of these reversals or uh, unchecking the box for long or short trades and trading in one direction. Finally, we have the gold contract. We did 510 today. We had an equity high of about 1,000. And then a couple of losers dr dragged us down. That's all for today's video. If you'd like to find out more, please contact us at systems at bluewavetrading.com or visit our website at, at uh, bluewavetrading.com. Thanks for watching today.